Cyrus, Darius, Xerxes. For as long as events have been recorded, the mighty empires of Persia have seated some of history's most famous rulers. However, in 867, the start date of Crusader Kings III, this is not one of those times. By the late 9th century, the Persians are being pushed out of their former strongholds in the Middle East. With the Muslim Caliphate annexing the Persian lands 200 years earlier, the Iranian people look for a new leader who can unify their fractured territories. And who better to lead them than you, average Crusader Kings III ruler? Today we are lucky enough to get our hands on the new Legacy of Persia DLC. And I am going to be diving into all the new decisions, traditions, religions, and the other new gameplay mechanics that it brings us. So let's get into the game and see if we can create the greatest Persian Empire the world has ever seen. Alright guys, we are in Crusader Kings 3 and you can see we have a new struggle, the Iranian Intermezzo. As this video is brought to you by Paradox, thank you for sending me this flavor pack early. I think we have to play as one of these five characters you see on the screen now. And this guy does say he's the hardest one to start as, but with our plans for this episode, I think I'd rather play as the Duke of Fars. You can see he's actually not an independent realm, he's a vassal of the Abbasid Empire. The Iranian Intermezzo is another struggle type mechanic, very similar to what we saw uh, in the Spanish flavor pack, the um, Iberian DLC that they release. So there's kind of two groups in this uh, struggle. One group which wants to support the Abbasid Caliphate and the other side are the Persian characters or, you know, the other cultures around this region who are kind of on the other side fighting against the Caliphate and the Abbasids encroachment onto um, onto their Persian land. So again, looking at the culture map, you can see a lot of, of Persian controlled territory uh, has been taken over by the Abbasid Empire. And we are no exception. We are actually one of these Dukes of the Abbasid Empire who has taken control of Persian land. You can see down here in our south along the coast, we have some territories which are both Persian and Zoroastrian, which is Pretty much the main reason I wanted to play as this guy, I want to do a run where I recreate Persia as Zoroastrian um, with all these lovely new mechanics that we have which we can explore uh, kind of at the same time which is going to be super fun. Really cool um, new buildings, you can see we got a special building in our capital which is awesome. We have another special building down here. Uh, which is actually a lake, which I really like. They added more like terrain special buildings, which is super cool. And I just want to explore all the new stuff they added in this DLC with you guys. But of course, at the same time, um, I plan on conquering pretty much the entire Persian Empire. If we click on our struggle over here, you can see there are three ways, just like the Iberian struggle, there are three ways to end this. You either kind of humiliate the Abbasids by launching your own caliphate. You can help the Abbasids renew the caliphate or we have an Iranian resurgence, which is what we want to do here. We want to complete this by controlling 30% of the Persian Empire, which is actually not that hard. That's why I think it's going to be the perfect thing for a little introduction into this DLC. And then we actually get the beautiful Persian Empire with that with some really cool other things as well, you know, renown, 10,000 renown, which is nuts. There's new legacies, the Brilliance legacy, which some of these look really cool. For now, all I really want to take care of is booming my economy, getting our gold up even higher. We're already making 6.6 .6 gold per month, which is really, it's really decent for the start of the game, but I want to get higher than that. And I want to do some things like, um, convert my culture. Uh, Tajik is also a Iranian heritage culture, which is nice. And they do have some new uh, traditions, which is good. But if I click on the Persians, you can see they have uh, just a few other things that are more valuable to me, mainly garden architects, which is huge. You guys know, uh, if you watch my tall videos, this is a crucial, crucial tradition for playing tall games. 
and we actually get to start with it as the Persians with irrigation um, experts. This is pretty much the exact same as Dryland Dwellers, um, which I'll pop on the screen right now. Gives you all the same bonuses down here. The only extras that you get are a disease resistance, which is, I guess, pretty nice. And then also um, we get this unique building, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And the Gardener uh, Patient and Scholar Traits have a tax bonus. I think it's 10% tax bonus in um, dry land or desert. Okay, enough talking about the game. Let's start playing. Um, first of all, I'm going to move my capital down here uh, to Shiraz. And the reason I did that is because our old capital actually had Kurdish culture, which I don't want to convert to. I want to convert to the Persian culture. And you can always convert to whatever culture your capital is. Uh, if you go to your decisions, you scroll down a little bit, there's always this convert to local culture option. So we're going to do that. I'm going to also recruit a gardener because now that we have garden architects, we can go over here to our court positions, pick up a court gardener. And you can see this guy's going to be getting 0.4 development per month in the capital. You can see even though this region is in desert mountains, which comes with a 50% oh, decrease in development growth, we're still gaining right now 2.0 uh, because of that, because of court gardeners, because we're developing the county now, but also because we have this unique um, lake special building here, which gives us a 60% bonus to our development growth. So it turns the mountains into a positive thing. Added benefit of being in mountains, of course, it is hard to invade these things. You get a huge defender advantage for fighting in mountains. So should make us a little bit beefier on the defense as well. So now we're, we're the right culture, but if we go down here, you can see uh, we could also convert to this Zoroastrian religion, which is in the south of our land, if we had a little bit more piety. Now we will make that piety up pretty quickly because we're making 6.5 right now, which is pretty funny because we are our lieges um, religious council member, even though we're planning to change our religions. But what we can do here is since we're unmarried, we can try to find a, uh, a wife who is from the Zoroastrian religion. Do we go for a giant? I feel like you never end up having that many giant kids when you're a giant, but you know what? Let's go for it anyway. Should be fun. I mean, like we got that uh, Chad's jawline going. Anyway, I think we could look sick with, um, with some giant kids. We do have one kid here already who's 23, which I'm not a big fan of, especially because they have some stinky traits. So let's try to have some new kids with our wife here. Um, and now that our wife has this religion, we can adopt faith from her. And you can see we reduce this cost by a approximately 50%. So we're still missing 94 piety, but we'll get that really quick. Uh, we are making 7.3 right now. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show off was this special building that we get for being irrigation experts, um, which comes with the Persian culture. And it's a really nice building, giving you development growth percent, development growth flat out, and it's buildable right in the beginning of the game. So you can imagine it's gonna be extremely powerful uh, for tall games. I wanted to revoke this county down here from my vassal who owned these two. I accidentally revoked this one, which was in the mountains. I wanted this one because it was also dry lands on the coast, which is pretty valuable. Um, so I guess I'm going to have to go to war with my two vassals here. Not something I wanted to do, but you can see they're both going to join this against me. Hey, what the fuck? Okay, well, that's a little disappointing. So we died. I mean, it wouldn't be Crusader Kings, I guess, if you didn't die in the first two years of um, playing a new game. And there you go. At least we hit 100% of this war. Although it's kind of meaningless for me to um, lock both these vassals up because I now do not have enough domain limit to hold either of these counties. But I'll hold them anyway for now as we kind of decide what to do with our land here. So there's actually this decision which is pretty good and if I wasn't going for a Zoroastrian faith I definitely would do it. What you get is a very nice 0.2 for 25 years you get a 0.2 development growth boost in the capital you get a little bit more holding tax in the capital and some levy size which is is actually really good but the problem is it costs us 250 piety to do that and we actually need our piety because we're about to adopt the faith which now um, has went up 
to this price, I think probably because our learning isn't as high as our father's was. Yeah, our father had 22 learning. So that's what made this so cheap. So now we have to wait a little bit longer. I'm wondering if it would be worth it to go on a, um, a pilgrimage to get enough piety to convert. Uh, it shouldn't be too expensive because we kind of live close to Mecca. Oh, great heavens! 70 gold, but it's a bit dangerous. So I'm going to have to pick up some, uh, probably some mercenaries. Oh, that's way safer. All right, so for only 84 gold, we'll be able to go on a Hajj to Mecca. And there you go, we finished the pilgrimage. We gain a good amount of piety from it. Now, before we even get back from the pilgrimage, let me go over here and let's adopt faith from our wife. Uh, you can see a lot of our court is gonna adopt with us, which is really nice. So we got our new faith now. It doesn't really have anything that's too amazing uh, in terms of tenets. There's another Zoroastrian faith up here, actually. And the reason I thought it would be fun to play as this religion actually was be because you can see they have this communal possessions unique tenet, which comes with a 10% discount to building construction costs. And we are already getting a 10% discount in all our dryland terrains from the irrigation experts tradition. So that would be 20% plus, you know, um, there's a few other things we could do, but I'm not really decided which one, which Zoroastrian faith I want to play as because this one has the added benefit of having this holy site up here, which gives you a 20% um, development growth boost in dryland terrain, which I mean, if we look at the terrain map, there is a lot of drylands, which is this pink stuff in the Persian territory. So it would help all of our Persian brothers get the um, development growth up higher, which is what you need at the end of the day in order uh, to unlock technologies faster. So I took my first piece of land here. Um, I'm going to move in for this duchy here in Isfahan. The reason is this county over here is actually really nice. I kind of want to control it myself. We have the Friday Mosque over here, a special building which gives development, holding tax, renown, just a bunch of good stuff. And this place was all one region. It was like one duchy. But after we declared war on them, they got war declared from some other people. And now they've split up. So I'm just going to start conquering all these regions because they are culturally Persian, which I need because I want to be the culture head for the Persian people. But also I'm going to want to eventually create the kingdom of Persia, which uh, you can see is this territory here. And we're going to need 19 de jure uh, counties to be able to do that. Stop! You violated the law. It's not really an exploit, but something you can always do is uh, when you capture a region that just has one county and you also capture the ruler of that region, you can ransom them for however much gold they have. Normally it'll be 50 to 100 because they're the leader. Gold. So you can see we ransom him. We get 30 gold from that because that's all he had. And then we still have 100% because they only have a one county realm. So we control all of their territory so it has to go to 100%. Then you can enforce your demands just like that. We made some money while also conquering this uh, territory. And also these uh, regions next to us are all alone and really weak so I'm going to gobble them up before anybody else can. <laughs> Geeky guy, man. Hired some mercenaries when I wasn't looking. Loser, loser. <laughs> You're coming home with me. So we won the first war against these two really weak counties, but the guy who bought the mercenaries has now managed to fortify himself on defensive terrain in desert mountains. He's actually building a small hill force, which would give him more defensive advantage. So we have to take this before he gets that up. Uh, but also we would be attacking over a river, which is bad. They also have a 30 tier commander, which is better than my commander. Oh, and because I think these guys he has. These spearmen actually counter our heavy infantry, which is very interesting. So, and they get bonus from fighting in mountains. So yeah, this is like great defensive terrain for this guy don't really know what to do to get this guy out of here 
All right, so I'm gonna have to do a little something here to uh, maybe, just maybe give, give us a chance in this war. All right, so this guy should sail over here relatively quick. Um, as long as he doesn't just sit in the ocean the entire time. That'd be great. Bro, please don't do this to me, man. What are you doing? This is a joke. Come on, why are you drowning yourself? Oh my god, this game sometimes, bro. Look what the cat dragged in. Okay, our allies joined in, so we should win this now. Oh, and his right one attack, his mercenary contract runs out too. And we can do the same thing here where we're going to ransom this guy. 450 gold. He accepts, but we have control of his whole land, so now he can piss off. Also, we went into the next round of the struggle. So we're in the... Uh, stabilization phase which is pretty good it reduces our men at arms recruitment cost by 50 percent so 50 percent cheaper to recruit um units for us what else is there there is uh learning new languages gives us prestige so i think i'm going to do that because i need prestige to declare wars on people and then this is the big one castle building construction construction cost minus 30 percent so if we go to somewhere where we have our county like in Isfahan, as an example, if we were to swap out one of these buildings, you can see we get a 45% discount because this is where the irrigation experts comes into effect. So I think I will swap the watchtowers in Isfahan for the desert agriculture just to get the money up in this county. The mosque gives us a 20% bonus to our holding tax here anyway, so I think it's probably valuable. Oh, look at this, guys. Our liege has ended up Oh, they were murdered, actually. Excellent. Um, so now we have a new leash here, and look at their strength, guys. Super weak right now. Oh man. Let's see. Our our independence faction that we had tried to push through was at what? We have four guys in here now. I think it's a perfect time to press our demands of the independence faction. But already, I think we are a good amount stronger than him. We've got some other wars against him now. The Byzantines are getting nasty. Should have a pretty, pretty easy time breaking away from him here. Our liege is losing all his wars. And there you go. Our independence war has passed. So now we got a couple more independent realms. Um, splitting off from the Abyssin Empire, but he is really, really weak right now. There should be, hopefully, a lot more people declaring war on him soon enough. Alright guys, I think it's about time we talk about another new game mechanic, the tax jurisdiction. The way it works is they wanted to change how taxes were gathered from uh, clan-type realms. The tax you get is no longer based on opinion, um, now it's based on the tax jurisdiction which people are in and you can see down here you have these tax jurisdictions and you have somebody who can um, manage different regions they can hold up to 12 people but that doesn't only include counts it also includes uh, as you can see minor landlords like city republican city owners um, it's a pretty interesting way of doing it. No longer do you have to worry about managing people's opinion. You can see this lady hates me, but she's still giving me her full allotment of what is only 7.5 tax, but mainly due to the fact that uh, my tax collector's aptitude is pretty bad. Uh, he has average aptitude right now, and it comes from a combination of a bunch of other skills. But there is a decision just like the gardener um, where you can recruit search for tax collectors so i'm going to launch this right now it costs 40 gold and we'll see we just got a new guy um and this guy here actually has good ability and you can see that's going to gain me instead of what i was getting before uh 0 0.25 gold i'm now getting 0 0.5 gold because good aptitude makes it so that people have to pay 12% of their tax from his aptitude being good. And then I have a 25% bonus on that because I changed the tax decree, which is like 
kind of like managing contracts. There's different types of uh, different ways you can tax your your people. So let's say if I wanted one group of people here to be taxed uh, for their gold income. So I would take all the people who have good gold income. And then maybe there's some people who have better money. Like this guy down here actually has pretty decent money, but he has low, uh, pretty low gold income. He only has 0 0.3, but he has 46 levies. What I could do actually with this is swap him. I can remove him as a taxpayer from this group, add him into uh, this group. And then I can change the tax decree instead of being um, this is a cat one, which you can see uh, gets me 25% bonus to the taxes. I can do something like maybe, well, I'm going to put him on this type of tax decree for now because it gives me 15% uh, more taxes from him, but also 15% more levy. So if we do this, we now look at him. Huh? He's giving less. What the fuck? Okay, so maybe that wasn't the best example um, of how to use these tax jurisdictions. But I think what could be the most interesting part of them is actually the benefits you see here, which show you a certain stacking percentage you get per vassal you have under a certain tax jurisdiction. Let's test this theory. So I'm supposed to be getting my liege. So that's me. It's supposed to be getting plus 1% domain tax per vassal that's part of this jurisdiction. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So we have six vassals in here. So if we click on any of my titles, we go down here. You can see from this benefit, I'm actually getting a 6% tax boost. So that is pretty interesting. Some of these things could actually be pretty cool. Like if you look down here, this guy would give my men at arms damage plus 1%. So if I had like two of these guys on this type of tax uh, benefit, we would be gaining 24% bonus to our men at arms damage, which is actually not, um, not noticeable like that. That could stack pretty well. There's also this one here, which gives you um, monthly income at war, which maybe is useful. Maybe not the, that useful. I still think this is the best one because it just gives you more tax flat out as well as better domain tax for yourself. It does make them hate you a little bit more, but you know, your vassals already hate you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, is there anything else that's cool? This one is kind of cool because it gives development growth to your vassals. Like maybe if you wanted your vassals to grow taller on their own, it'd be cool. And then this one down here actually is pretty cool. Um, we lose 10% tax from our vassals, but we actually get development growth. Okay, wait, let's try this one out. Okay, we know we don't have ancient authority like this one. Oh, so that's ancient. Okay, wait, one minute, one minute, guys. We're working this out together. Ancient authority. So that's when you get to tier four here, you unlock that benefit, which is going to be pretty cool. So that I could see actually being pretty valuable because that's 12% development growth, I assume, in every one of your counties. And then if you have, let's say, two tax jurisdiction guys on that full of vassals, um, you'd be getting 24% bonus to your development growth, which is very, very healthy. All right, so I was able to wiggle out a stewardship from somewhere. So I'm at six of six domains, and you can see that brings us almost to 5,000 military strength, just a little bit less than the Abbasid. So I'm not too worried if they declare war on us. We're also on par with um, this fake Persian kingdom that's to our right. And uh, we will need to take land from one of those guys because I need four more counties to create the kingdom of Persia. And as you can see, I'm missing land from Sure, this place in the north, which is pretty weak, but they only have two counties that are de jure Persian territory. And then um, the only other places I could potentially take land from would be the either the Abbasids or the Safarids. Um, oh, we actually just hit Illustrious. Perfect. So let's go ahead and do this. Ooh, conquer Duchy. Take this one, I think. He is decently strong, actually. Um, but fighting two wars at once, I feel like it's just going to be a bit too much for him. And it's all too much uh, for little Lando Norris. I forgot I had all these, um, potential hooks on all these people. So I'm going to blackmail all of them and you should see me get a ton of gold from all this. If everything goes to plan, um, just put your spy master on fine secrets in a big court. I have him in the Abbasid empire right now. 
and you can see we just got a ton of hooks up there. So now if we go down here, you can see not only can we ransom some random dude for 100 gold, which I love, but there are nine people we can demand payments from. Now, most of them are just 10, but we do have a few 50s. Like, look at that 50 right there. Another 50. 20, 27, 36. And just like that, we went up to 250 gold just from having my spy master doing a little bit of digging. Oh, and look at that. I was getting a bit worried because he was capping my capital, but something happened. The war changed. Oh, this guy became independent. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter because we can still enforce our demands, get all that land right there. Um, disband this army. And now if we look at the Kingdom of Persia, you can see the only thing we're missing to make it is 425 gold, which we should get pretty soon. Oh, okay. So we just died. That's, I don't think that's bad. We were the only son, which is good. At least with this character, we do have, uh, we will be able to create the Kingdom of Persia as his first action, which is pretty fun. We now get access to our royal court, which is actually pretty useful. I guess we'll stick with diplomatic. Maybe we can actually um, vassalize some people if we if we do some diplomacy stuff, which could be fun. So now that we're a kingdom, I think pretty much all we have to do is just start conquering. Um, we actually have room to hold some very nice secondary castles. So we're going to revoke these first. We can go to eight domains, which is our highest we've been so far this game. But we will get conquering pretty much anyone who will give us some nice claims. We actually will hold this pretty mountain here, which might be, uh, if we click, yeah, we it's not exactly the holy site, but there is a holy site here, which would get us plus 20% night effectiveness, which goes a long way. I should also probably focus on getting the, um, the holy site over here as well for that development growth in drylands, which should help our Persian people a lot. So this guy's horse archers. I would be attacking on a mountain, which I told you twice already is bad. But the thing is, I know these horse archers are weak in mountain tiles, so I'm going to attack anyway. And you can see we are losing a good amount of um, uh, advantage modifier. But that being said, their horse archers are doing 30 damage less than they should. So I think it's a fair battle. And the whole time we're seizing his land down as well. Oh, we actually hit 100% there. So let's enforce our demands, disband the army. And look at that. We now gain control of this really cool mountain here. One thing I actually really wanted to do, but I completely forgot about is, well, I guess I can't do it yet. But when we have a new slot here for traditions, I want to try to pick up mountain, the uh, mountain tradition to get discounts and more development out of mountains. It'll make us... I think it'll stack really nicely with this lake over here in Shiraz. That would be really fun, but I have to wait. I think that only kicks in once we go into the next um, era. But at least now, if we look at the Persian Empire, we actually went from uh, our original area to all the way to the extremity in the um, northwest. So I'm pretty happy with that. Remember, we only have to get 30% of this entire area in order to end the struggle. You know what I actually will do here because we are a theocratic face. I'm gonna faith. I'm gonna do my theocratic vassal um, tactic here. We'll see how this pairs with our clan government if we have a theocratic vassal. How is that gonna work with a tax jurisdiction? So in order to do this, we're gonna click on this guy. We're then gonna reassign a new person here. We're gonna grant him all six of these titles. He's a theocracy. He's making 1.1 gold right now, although all his stuff is really low control. So that's going to have to go up slowly, but surely. Does he go into here? That's my question. Or is he like a separate being because he's a, he's not really a clan. So here he is down here and um, looks like he doesn't go into the tax jurisdiction. He's his own thing as, as being a theocracy. But I think that's going to be pretty good for us because as you can see, 
Um, but as you can see, he's already giving us 12%, which is pretty high. And that's only going to increase as his gold goes up and as well as we increase our level of devotion. Oh, and look at this, guys. The kingdom over here has completely exploded, meaning all these areas here are ripe for the picking. So I think I'm going to comb through and just declare war on all of these border regions to grow our beautiful Persian kingdom here. Oh boy, here I go killing again. I like how all these guys are just sitting in their capitals, um, not even trying to come into my territory. It makes them very easy to go over there and just kill them and take their land. And there you go, that's the last war done. So the um, phase of the struggle just changed to unrest, and I guess there's a yeah friendly territory levy reinforcement rate. Oh no, levy size plus 100%, so that's what I kind of noticed. I'm like, we just shot up to 10,000 men. Oh it's because of that, everyone gets more levies. I'm going to finally declare war now for this holy site, which is going to get us 20% development growth in dry lands, which is pretty big. And now that it is unrest, we can actually do this conquer duchy holy war type. So we're going to do that for all this land over here and slowly start taking pieces away from this guy. Okay, guys, we have went into the early medieval era, which is good for two reasons. First of all, it's going to make our speed for researching these um, tribal texts a lot faster. Only seven years now till mustering grounds. Uh, this is because you get a bonus for being from the previous era. So we should fill out these tribal texts pretty quickly. Crop rotations is going to be big for us as well after we pick up mustering grounds. More importantly, we can reform the Persian culture and pick up a new tradition and I really want to pick up mountain homes. Uh, you can see this actually makes it so development growth in mountains is uh, goes up by 20% and desert mountains by 35%. So I think this is going to make our capital extremely insane for stacking development in. Uh, it also reduces the building construction costs in mountains as well as holding construction costs in mountains. And since we have so many mountains, it only costs 2,000 prestige to establish. So we're going to do that. It's going to take 30 years, which is actually pretty long. But once that goes through... It's over for the little guy. Oh, look at this, guys. We have our first person where we can vassalize. Even though we're a different faith from these people, which is like gives a pretty big uh, decrease in vassalization, we still are getting some very nice things from our military power, uh, our level of devotion. We actually have this cool ability because we have a diplomatic court where our court grandeur affects this as well. So that actually pushes us over the edge. So we're going to offer vassalization for this guy. He accepts it. And look at that. We have now got a brand new vassal here. Now, at least our Persian kingdom stretches from stretches from sea to sea and it's looking pretty decent. Let's have a little check on the ending criteria and we are. Oh, so we have 30 percent. So we just need to get our level of fame to exalted amongst men, which only requires us to get a thousand four hundred more uh, fame or prestige. So maybe we could spend our gold on doing a grand wedding or something. I know those give a ton. All right, guys, I finished my grand tournament. There was an archery contest and a recital, and I won both of them, of course. So what kind of prize? Oh, yeah. I forgot I decreased the cost of the, uh, the prizes. So we get some not so great prizes, but I think that's okay. You can see we now have hit um, exalted amongst men which means we can end the Iranian struggle we have enough land um, of the Persian Empire just over 30% of it to be able to create the Persian Empire through this decision also ending the struggle we're gonna get some I'm interested to see what this a uh, dying loyal army is like if it is it gonna constantly respawn when I uh, even when I die no 5,000 prestige, which I don't really think I have anything to do with because I already tried upgrading my culture. We're going to get this, the Flame of Persia. 20% cultural fascination progress. That's cool. That's actually really good. Uh, in the ancient Persia region, which is pretty much the, um, looks like the Dejur Empire region, 
we are gonna get um, we're gonna get another 25 20 percent development growth increase which is gonna be pretty crazy um, people will be more likely to accept vassalization from us uh, also what's really cool is anybody with an Iranian heritage is going to have a 50% chance to convert to our religion. So all those guys who convert to our religion are probably going to accept vassalization, vassalization from us on the spot. It's going to be cool to see how many um, how many realms we get to uh, absorb from that. And then um, everybody else in the region gets some cool stuff. Loyal Iranian soldiers. Awesome. Really cool. So let's do it, guys. Select my belief. We're going to promote our new faith instead of revealing our secret faith, which we didn't have this game. Reignite the flames. There we go, guys. Um, only 50 years, actually, since the start of the game. We already finished the um, the struggle. Now, we could have stayed in the struggle for longer. Oh, wow. Look how nice our logo is now. Very beautiful. But if we go to our legacies, you should see we have... Um, <laughs> 11,000 renown. So let's unlock all of this top row here. This one gives us stewardship lifestyle experience, which is pretty good, as well as some scheme power. This one we get um, vassal contribution. This is the one I want ancient authority because it's going to help with our development growth, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And we still have enough to buy the last one here Splendor Reborn. Unlocks the embellished capital decision. I really want to see what that is. It's a tier five and normally the tier five ones are pretty overpowered. Choose a super art for cards or projects with so free leave. Okay, interesting. So it looks like this decision we can either uh, recently conquer a county which we can then use to plunder, or we can spend 390 gold. Hmm. First of all, let's go look down here at our development. We're going, we're going up by 1.2 now in the capital, even though we're not even increasing the development here. That is pretty crazy. Uh, you can see all the very nice bonuses here. If we look at where we are increasing the um, development, we are at 17, but we're going to be going up by 3.5. Uh, rekindled Persian Spirit, Flame of Persia. Oh, I didn't realize these would both stack. That's actually really nice. 40% from that. Um, our Holy Site Irrigation ex uh, efforts. Really nice. Really nice. Um, okay, it looks like there's only one guy we can vassal. What the heck? Okay. That's a little bit surprising. Okay, no, there's three other guys, so four people we got to vassalize from this. Excellent. 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 You love to see it. Alright, so I think it's also time to show you guys the um the new tax decree that we got. We had it on this one here, which gains us 25% tax from all of the vassals underneath this tax jurisdiction guy. But we're gonna switch over to this one, which now makes us less money you can see we're going to lose about like 1.5 gold from this which i think is fine because we're going to get the added benefit of having uh plus one development growth per vassal in this grouping so right now we have 12 vassals in here so once that went through let's go click down here look at this and you should see weird i don't really see it oh so here it is it applies to the capital i guess I thought it would apply maybe everywhere, but you can see we're getting 12% bonus in the capital from that. Oh no, we get it everywhere actually. Okay, that's... Wow, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, you see it all over here. 12% bonus. Let's see, in Isfahan. Yeah, 12%. So we're already stacking some pretty huge development bonus percentages, um, as you can see here. And we're still only not even a hundred years in the game, only 50 years into the game. And we are still waiting 25 years for um, the mountains to become overpowered. But you can just imagine how good that's going to be. Let's see, even in these other regions, does it affect them? No. So I guess it's only in the regions I control. But even at that, 
you can see all of our friendly Persian territory has the um, holy site bonus if they're from our religion and the rekindled Persian spirit. So all of my vassals, if they are spending their time and effort on all of my Persian vassals, at least if they're spending their time and effort on increasing their development, it should go up pretty quickly. Yeah, we're kind of scary right now. Even the Arabian Empire is really weak. We've kind of been destroying them this whole game. The Byzantines are falling apart. This giant Khazarian Empire is only um, a bunch of Mongols and levies, so I don't think they're too strong either. We unlock a new regiment of men-at-arms. Oh, what the heck? Oh yeah, and we unlock this special horse archer, which is really cool as well. You can see these guys... Um, they're very expensive, but they have 91 damage and 36 um, toughness with 35 pursuit as well. And they do well in drylands, plains, and desert mountains, which is actually pretty sick. So we're going to get one regiment of that. It's going to cost all our money. I mean, look how cool these guys are. Okay, so we're going to enforce our demands. I'm not going to grant this land away because I want to kind of see how this decision works. Um, here we go. We recently conquered a county, choose an architect, let's do uh, maybe myself, I'm pretty sure I have really good stewardship, so let's ornament my capital. And here we go, so let's see what the options are. We can build a large mausoleum for when I die, which gains me 500 learning, um, 300 renown, and then I'll gain, whoa. I'll gain 20% tax out of there for 30 years. That's that's really decent. Um, what else is there? There's This would get me a bit of prestige. And all my courtly vassals would gain opinion of me. Not really that useful. And this one, the same thing, but for uh, religious vassals. So I think I will go for the large mausoleum. That sounds pretty fun. At the taxes, you should see, yeah, Monumental Splendor plus 20% right there. Very nice. All right, so I think that's all the fun stuff done. I might play a little bit more off camera to see if I can, you know, just go to the early medieval and pick up probably Manorialism for my economic upgrades, Battle Vince too, so I can actually get them in my castles. Once I do that, get these, um, these buildings to tier four, you know, maybe get my trade ports all to tier four. Um, I want to come back here and just see how developed uh, we can get this southern area of uh, the Duchy of Fars. You can already see we have 22 development, which is more than Baghdad. It's kind of fitting we would uh, end this first part of the game having a better development than the Abbasid Empire's capital. Because um, we totally took over this region. And yeah, see you in a second. <laughs> So I played a little bit longer here and you can see we're absolutely pumping development now into the capital 3.5 per month, but that's even with, um, without a really good gardener, you can see some of the percent bonuses are crazy. Now that we picked up mountain homes, we're getting 35 from that. Um, I haven't went down learning at all with this character, so we could probably increase that development growth like a lot if we wanted to. But even some of these places around, you can see we're getting 2.4 in this bordering region um, in dry lands, mainly because we do have some nice cities around there, all pumping development here too, 3.1, 1.6. So if we look at the average development of all of the Persian um, counties right now, we're at 0 0.28, which is pretty decent. 36 in the capital puts us at the highest developed land in the world tied with Rome right now We have done a good job converting everybody to our uh, Zoroastrian religion. We actually own all five of the holy sites now, which is pretty good And you can see I have just been taking a decent amount of land But all this land up north actually I didn't have to take for myself My vassals have been doing a lot of work for me which I really enjoy. We're gonna go up to 18,000 men. We're making 50 gold per month right now. I think really what what is blowing my mind for the development is this right here, our uh, special tax decree that we have, which gains us 1% development per um, vassal. This actually could start stacking really crazy 
um, the more land we take. You see, for every vassal we have underneath these uh, four taxpayers here, which I guess the max would be 48% because we only have four. But if we we're able to max this out, like right now we have 26% coming from this development bonus and that's in every single one of my counties. So this is a pretty insane um, new way to tax your your people because vassal tax normally doesn't really give you that much money anyway, at least from clan vassals. So if you can turn them into just ways to pump development, I think that's a really good idea. I've also been mixing in a lot of um, theocra uh, theocratic vassals here, which get me a ton of money. You can see this guy here is paying me four gold on his own, and I'm only devoted sir, and I'm not even paragon of virtue or religious icon, which would get me even more money from those guys. So pretty crazy. We're almost a hundred years into the game, but I've already lost the will to keep playing this because we are just so powerful. You can see there's some places with like 8,000 men, but nobody really stands a chance against our insanely developed Persian empire. So I hope you guys really enjoyed. Remember, you can check out the, um, the new DLC with my link in the description below. I have to thank Paradox again for sponsoring me for this video. Really cool to be able to bring you content on these DLCs early. It's just super awesome to be able to do that. It's really crazy that that you guys watch these videos so much to allow me to do something like that. It really blows my mind. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have a very interesting video idea I want to do for my next video, but it might be a little bit hard to pull off. So please bear with me. I know it's been a while since I uploaded the last as well, but I've just been super busy. All right, guys, get out there, get into the DLC and enjoy yourselves and create your very own massive Persian empire.